Well, I'm deep enough as far as the inlet goes, but I'm not really sure yet if I am deep enough. So what I have to do is project where this hole is going to come out in my tank to make sure that I have enough for a full thread of this tang screw. So what I've done, I've projected the hole over to the side of the stock. So I want this right angle to this. So it won't necessarily be right angle to the tang, but that's all right. I'm holding this on the line of my stock, and now I'm projecting these lines up here. Where I want that hole to come through. I'm going to project these lines. Still a square on my sides here, right in the middle of here. Because if I just start drilling from the other side, that it might not come out. I want it to come out on center. So I'm going to measure this. I'm going to make a center punch right there in the middle. And I'm going to drill this through in the drill press, just a, a couple sizes smaller than my number 21 tap drill. Because it'll be 90 degrees to this, I, I want it 90 degrees to this, which isn't perfectly parallel. So then I'm going to set up a center point on my drill press. I'm going to set this into a block of wood and clamp it on the drill press. Line, it lines up with my number 21 drill bit for that tap drill. And then I will center this in this hole here. And then I'll come down through the top here with my number 21 drill through the tang and into the stock, and then I'll use my body drill to come take the barrel out and have the body drill just to drill the wood down halfway, and then I'll set this in the hole, and I'll come down through here with the body drill, and then go all the way through, and then I'll have a hole I can guide my tap. And hopefully my tap is long enough. <laughs> it's not going to be very much. If I can get it started in that hole, that tap drill hole, then I can take the barrel out and re-tap it through. And then it should line up. It should be a tap hole that lines up with this screw. And if I got enough coming through, I make a nice rounded off end, then I'm okay. But if, I, if I'm not a full thread in that tang, then I've got to come in a little more with this trigger guard so that I get a full thread in that tang. Okay, so I have that lined up, but I have to be down to the maximum travel to get enough space in here, so i got to move the drill up some. Got the drill extended way out so I can get it lined up. I'm going to bring it up so I can get that stock in there. So that's good. That lets me know that the, the holes are aligned. So it looks like with the tap holder all the way out on, on the square of the tap, it looks like it's going to make it. At least to get a few threads. I'm just going to put a bare minimum of oil on this tap. I don't want a bunch of oil getting in the stock. I'll wipe most of it off. Okay, so that's, that's got enough of a start. Well, this is really lucky. It came out just right. There's just barely enough sticking up through here. I've got a full thread and I'll just, it's an emery. After I get this uh, 
I'll put in a, a hardware screw so I can file this tang down with the stock. And then I'll just slightly dome this so it just barely sticks up above here with a domed head. And uh, yeah, well, I'm happy with that. So now I can check my ramrod because I know the screw's going to there. If I can get a little bit longer, more as long a ramrod as I can get, the ramrod hole now goes to here. Oh yeah, I can get, I could come back all the way to that screw if I want. I'm getting almost a half inch more of ramrod in there. So yeah, I'm going to drill, drill it further back. As much ramrod as you can get is what you want. So I'm going to drill with my taper drill that one inch number eight screw. So I want to put a brass nose cap around the front of the stock here. It has to be cut up here to clear the ramrod in. I'm going to put this, this end on the ramrod. So I'll have to file the end of the ramrod till it goes in that hole. And I'll stick it on with some JB Weld and I'll probably put a 16th inch pin through it. So this has to be cut up enough to clear that. So I'm going to file all this around and make it a nose cap out of, uh, I got some 32nd inch brass sheet here. I'm going to cut a piece 7 eighths wide and bend around here. And then I'll have to file 7 eighths back up to file this round so I can bend that nose cap around it. So I'm going to take this width to the barrel here. I don't want to take it too thin because it's a, a big gun. I'll take it down to about 3 16 from the barrel here. And underneath the barrel probably a little less than 5 16 And then I'll uh, I might, I'll take this down a little, I'll probably take this down less than 3 16 I want it to be 3 16 to the edge of this which is a 32nd. I'll take this down a little less than 3 16 between 3 16 and an eighth and I'll take this down a little less than underneath the barrel to a little less than 5 16 and round it all off so I can bend this brass around that and then I'll anneal it and I'll heat it up to that dull red in the dark with the propane torch so I can bend it around there and it usually gets some pretty soft where it bends pretty easy. If it gets, starts getting hard to bend, then I'll stop and anneal it again. I'm going to file a few flats on here to give some place for the JB well to go so it doesn't like hydraulic itself and not be able to get this in there so it's got to have some place for it to squeeze out. I'm going to smear a little around on the inside and a little on this and I'm about uh, a little less than a sixteenth from the back there.
I'm going to use one of my circle drawing tools here so that I got some lines to work to. Like a dime works pretty good for that. I'm working mostly by guess and by eye. This will give me some reference lines so I can get smooth bend on that brass. I thought it looked a little too fat, so I'm rounding it off, kind of following the contour of the barrel a little more. So the stock's going to taper down to this. And I need to cut some of the end off of here so I got some to bend. And it's still pretty soft, I think I can get that out of it. Taking my lock panels down, just leveling them out right now. I got quite a ways to go. My sanding board, just a piece of real straight three quarter inch plywood fastened to a real straight two by four. And now I can take the upper and lower surfaces down. Almost to their final height. I'll leave a little bit of wood on for finished sanding, but I'm going to take them mostly down to where just that first sixteenth of an inch of the trigger guard goes into the wood. And this will be level with this up here. And I can take this up here. Down, I'll leave a little over an eighth. Take a round rod. Almost there now. I'm just going to blend this in real nice with that lock panel. I haven't tapered these yet because it's better to clamp them when they're parallel. I just clean them up. So. I'm not going to take it all the way down to the tag quite yet. I'm going to take a lot off. I'm just going to leave this a little bit. 20 to 30 thousandths between a 64th and a 32nd. It'll get taken down when, when I do the final shaping. <laughs> I'm not going to take much off here. I don't want this to get much thinner. But a little bit will come off here. I'm just going to kind of swoop this up from here to over. This is where my barrel pin goes. I want to leave plenty of meat there. I never take everything all the way down at one time. I go through and take it down a little closer and I'll glue that all over and the stock will start taking its shape. This will get tapered down here and blend in with the nose cap. So stock shaping is happening and that's a really exciting time because you're starting to see what the gun's going to be. These little cabinet scrapers, well, once you get them Sharpen right. It can be a challenge to sharpen just right, but if you get them there, they sure work good. They leave a really smooth finish. You can actually remove quite a bit of wood with them. You should look right, right down to that line and redraw the line. You just take off a little bit so you can be real accurate with them. Well, the finish they leave behind it doesn't even need to be sanded. It's curly maple, you have to stop and sharpen everything pretty often. So now I've got guidelines to work from. Got a surface here, here, lock panels. So I can actually get into the shaping of the stock. 
You know, I gotta redraw my center lines, my lock panels. And the stock will shape to those guidelines. Take my barrel channel down to half the barrel, almost half the barrel depth, not quite yet. Still might be drawing lines up here. So I'll take it down to where it's half the barrel back here and then right up to the very edge of that brass nose cap. Yeah, I decided since this stock is already so big, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna leave this solid. I'm gonna taper this down to this line. Everything's gonna, gonna gradually curve and swoop around to this line here. Probably come back to sort of a point here, but not too much. It won't really blend, blend in with this. But uh, yeah, I think it's only leave enough wood that it needs. And I'll be filing and maybe some planing and shaping a lot with the scrapers. Got some bigger scrapers. So I really like the way that those work. So oops. <laughs> yeah, get it upside down. Not sure what I'm going to do with these yet. I'll see how much this takes it out. That uh, counterbore tool that I got, I didn't turn it by hand. It left kind of a ragged hole and it's a little bit oversized. So I think I may be using some, some brass tubing rings or copper tubing rings or something to go in here. But right now I have stock shaping to do. I'm not going to worry about it. Also have my final trigger shape. Start cutting the slot for it. It's going to go, I'm going to pin it as high as possibly can up here to give me the most leverage with the least travel to trip that sear. This is going to be a difficult transition here because of uh, the angled ramrod. It's not going to be unnoticeable. When it's all rounded off, I don't think it's going to be too bad. Yeah, if you look at it, you're going to notice the ramrod angles off towards Mabel's place. But it was necessary to clear that big mainspring, so you got to do what you got to do. You'll never notice it when you're shooting it. I'm going to start my trigger slot while the stock's still kind of square. The uh, trigger wound up being a little over 100 thousandths thick. 110 thousandths. A little less than an eighth inch wide groove here. So I'm going to start out with, I'm going to make a slot. Just taking it easy because a slip here and I can take out a piece of wood there and I don't want to do that.
if that will keep my drills in the right place and I'm just going to go go down through there and I use the drill press because it's still kind of square on top I'm going to drill down about two inches it's going to be right about here it has to trip the sear right in there so I'm going to pivot it up here So I'm going to have to drill in about two, maybe two and an eighth. Don't want to come through up here, don't want to make it too thin. So yeah, drill about two and an eighth to start with up in this area because it's going to be, it doesn't have to be that deep back here, but up there it does. And I'll have to angle that drill. So where the slot is to start with, I probably won't go in that deep. I'll go in an inch and a half. Then I'll have to angle the drill up into this area and then just uh, start chewing it out with my little... I might have to make a special thin chisel that's long enough to get up there. So maybe I'm going to have to do that. Well, I've decided to bring my trigger slot forward. So I can get this thing in there and cut it, it'll be awful hard to get it in. And it'll be covered by the trigger guard except for that area right there, so... I'm going to bring my trigger slot all the way up to here. So I can get that thing up there and cut the... I have to cut a, the groove for it all the way up into here. So yeah, I'm going to have to make a longer chisel. I'm going to have to get a longer drill. Oh, that might... yeah, that drill will do it. You know, I've got a hundred hundred thousand drill, so at least let my chisel get in there. So yeah, I've never installed a trigger like this before, so it's another one of those learning experiences. But uh, yeah, all it has to do is work, and looking pretty is a plus. Make these little chisels out of hacksaw blades. Let me stick it down here. Work those pieces out of there till I have a slot. Well, I did have to make some specialty chisels. I've got a quarter inch, fairly thin chisel anyway, I grind it down to a hundred thousand so I can get in here do the sideways cutting. And this is a, a file, it's about a hundred thousandths wide, I can get this so I can make that and wood removal. And I've got it marked for my depth here, two and a quarter inches. And this back here is good, so it's getting closer. And it's got to go up about, oh, maybe another half inch is all. And then that should trip that sear. Final fitting will be done when the lock is together and I can get my clearance to my sear. You got to have free triggers, got to be perfectly free, but I don't like sloppy, floppy triggers, so... Before I pin that, I'll get her up there right where I want it, and with the proper amount, just a little bit of play when it's at full cock. Because it's going to have some, some travel, so... It's got to be able to trip it. And I think it will. I think that'll work as a trigger. I figured out what I'm going to do about those uh, 
oversized holes and I'm going to make finishing rings from brass pipe and I'm going to inlet them by hand. I'm not going to use any more counter boring tools. I'm just going to inlet these by hand and press fit them in with maybe a little JB weld for lubrication <laughs> and file them down flush with the stock. And they fit really good on the heads of those screws. So that'll take care of that. So I've worked the lock panel area down on the sanding board. And I'm just barely sticking above here. Just that chamfer I put on there is above the lock panel. It varies from maybe 60,000 here to about 40,000 here. The plate isn't perfectly flat. It's a casting made from a forging, originally forging. So that's where that's going to be, other than just the final sanding when it's uh, before I stain. And this side is taken down to where it's pretty even, as even as I can get it. So my tang centered here, and my trigger guard is centered here. And now I'm uh, rounding, working the stock up to that panel, and I'm going to do that as like a swoop. It's going to come in and swoop up to this, leave this as a raised panel, like a plateau. This down along the bottom, I'll probably just curve it up to the line. But this here and this up here, wherever I can, I'm going to I'm going to swoop it up to that panel, and that should give clearance in here for my hand. That's starting to feel pretty comfortable. So now the last metal that uh, I'm going to put on here is going to be these finishing rings. I'm going to center that on there like that. I'm going to trace around it with my knife and, uh, and carve it out like that. Let's carve it out with my chisels down to the depth of just what this area here is. I'll measure that with my calipers and just take it down and then I'll, I'll press these into the hole. Whatever sticking above the stock, I'll just file it down level with the panel. And we'll finish with the sanding blocks. I'm going to do the final sanding. Well, I'm going to do most of my final shaping with my scrapers. You can do real fine work with them. They leave a really nice finish. They make shavings. They don't make a lot of dust. And I have curved ones that I can work those swoops in with. And they just take off a little bit. It's not much danger of taking too much off. Got a lot of control over them. I can work right up to that that ridge too. It's really good for that. I have to use files when I get down to the brass here, and I'll file the wood and the brass at the same time. And I can work it right down there with my scrapers. Now I've got my outline of it. I'm going to stay inside of that and go down a bit and take some wood out. And then I'll gradually widen it out until this thing just starts to slip in. I'll take it down to my depth. Up to that dome is about 100 thousandths. Have this set at a hundred thousandths and I'll use that to get my depth. And then I'll take the edges out so that that just slips in. Now 
that needs sharpening. Time to sharpen tools. You do that a lot working with hardwood. Really touchy going here because if I take out too much, it's going to be a gap. And once once these start in, there's no getting them out. So I'm using the, the original pipe, piece of pipe I cut them from. Yeah, it's almost there. Sometimes I'm a little slow, but I get there eventually. I was using this to check the fit. I got the idea, why not sharpen this and use it for... It's not much of a cutting tool because it is brass, but a heck of a marking tool. I filed it down just a little bit to make an undersized hole so it wouldn't go oversized. And I just sharp, ground it out inside with my Dremel tool and finished it up with my deburring tool. Put a sharp edge on it and it really tells me where the wood needs to come out for that thing to sit down in there. But also what's really nice, it's a heck of a marking tool. It goes right down over that. I've got the mark where the wood has to come out. So it's kind of a time saver, but this one is almost done. I think that will go down in there. I'm going to wait till I get them all done. It's the right depth. And uh, then I'm going to just put a little JB weld around there, a little around there, and and press these in in the vise. And uh, there's still a little wood here because I'm going to take these down level with the wood. So I can still take some wood off of both sides because it's as I'm finishing the stock, it's going to get dirty and might get chewed up a little bit. So I left a little bit of wood. So I take these down with the file. And, well, yeah, I won't use my rasp. I use a smooth file. And uh, it's my scrapers. I'm going to show how I sharpen my scrapers. I put it up in the vise. I'm going to file this perfectly flat and straight as possible. I'm going to straighten flat and sharp corners. I'm going to do this to all four sides. I want a diamond stone. I'm going to take this down totally flat. I'm going to take off any burrs that are on there. 
I don't want any burrs on there except what I raised myself. I'm taking everything down flat. And I'm going to just gonna knock off the corners. So I don't scratch and dig in. The secret to these cabinet scrapers is drawing out and turning a burr. So right now I'm going to draw it out. I've got this flat on my workbench here. In fact, I'll use the solid wooden bench here. And I've got a burnishing tool, which is this is actually just a drill bit that broke off. I embedded it in a piece of wood, a piece of hardened steel. And so I'm going to lay it on here and turn it up just slightly and go back and forth across here. And I'll turn it over on the other side. You know, I'm going to turn the burr. So this is, I got it in the vise, so I'm going to start off, I'm going to start going back and forth, cross it just straight. A bunch of times. And then I'm going to tip it up slightly and do this side. On the other side. I'm going to do that to all four edges. There's a magic or what? Those little curls of wood coming off of there. Even, you can take off where you want, you can leave where you don't want to take off. They're very accurate, you can, I can work right up to that line. You can actually feel it better than you can see it. And you can get them even. That there is smooth, smoother than you could sand it actually. These curve scrapers are really good for doing the, the swoop. I got that one, then I got this one. They all need sharpening. But that's the name of the game with curly maple. <laughs> but boy, is it pretty. You can see some of the grain in this now as it gets smooth. Look at that. That's a beautiful piece of wood. Tomorrow I'll file these all down level with the panel. Then it'll be stock shaping. I'm getting into the final shaping of the stock. I'm taking this down, taking the wood, in the middle down at the same time. I've got the screws at the proper tension. Um, as I take these screw heads down, each one will have to go back. Now they're spot specific. Each one has to go back into the hole that it's in. I'll probably take a piece of cardboard, punch a hole in, put each screw in it and mark it. Like one, two, three, four. Uh, because otherwise the Screw slots won't be right. People that tell me, oh, you should line up all the screw slots. And I say, no, no, never. Because every uh, pilot hole and screw has an ideal tension. You take it to that ideal tension. You don't want to strip out the hole. You don't want to break it off. But you don't want it coming loose either. Now, in order to line up the screws in a line, I'd have to either over tighten it, which might break it, or loosen it. Which is not good. So I say no. I think it's the beauty is in them not lining up. You won't you won't see a boat builder do it. And I've never seen a gun builder do it either. <laughs> so no, I don't believe in lining up screw slots. I never do it.
I'm going to start taking the sides down until I get a nice even brass there. And then I'll use my scraper to take this edge down so that it's even, even here. He didn't probably t t end up taking it in pretty narrow. Probably so there's only maybe the widest part here, a sixteenth. Probably getting tired of my sixteenths of an inch. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, if if you you get a ding in your stock while you're finishing it, you'll be glad you have that extra sixteenth because you can take it out with it. Which is kind of like about the maximum that I want to have to take off when I'm getting close to a finish, but it's enough to where I can correct any mistakes in, in shaping. As you get down closer to the final dimensions, you want to be a little more accurate with your filing and scraping, but I still got quite a bit of wood here. We'll take it down where I probably have... Uh, a wide sixteenth, <laughs> between a sixteenth and an eighth. Just what looks right and what feels right. If it looks right and feels right to you, then that's what's right for you. That's what I go by. I'm finishing it with sandpaper backed up by a file. Something hard to keep everything nice and level. Doing 220 now, and I do my final finishing. I'll use 320, and then the wood will be ready to stain and oil, and the brass will be ready to go on the buffing wheel. Now I'm cutting the lock bolts to length. There'll be three different lengths because of the tapering, the stock. The ones on the ends, I'm going to cut them about a 30 second long, and I'm just going to dome over the head slightly. They'll just stick through. Between a 32nd and a 16th. This one in the middle, because this has to be flush, because the buffer for the hammer goes over the top of it. So it's just slightly below the surface so it doesn't hit this, so that it pulls the plate tight. I'm finishing this part, taking this down to this finished dimension, filing the Wood in the middle. I'm kind of just rounding it over slightly, not much. I could go a little more, just keeping it even. And I'll have to go and look at more pictures of old guns to see how they handle this transition here. These old guns were pretty angular, but then they had a lot of sweeping lines too. It was like a mix of angles and swoops they uh it's obvious when you look at some of the really old guns that they transitions from crossbows because the early stocks are very similar to crossbow stocks draw a file here take most of those marks out before I can polish out the barrel, I need to mount my rear sight. On my pistols, I usually mount them back here, about 3 sixteenths behind the end of the breech plug here, just with a dovetail 16th inch deep. It doesn't need that much. I see them sometimes over the breech plug area, and I could mount it up here on the barrel, it would give me a longer distance to my eye, it might make this sight, but then it shortens my sight radius from here to the front sight. And I just, I don't like cutting into a barrel where all the exploding's going on. <laughs> I like as much strength in my barrel as I can. I could go over the breech plug, I've seen them done there, but I tend not to want to do that either. It's taking all the force of the charge, so I'm going to mount this back here, between an eighth and a th three sixteenths behind the back of the barrel. Be closer to my eye, but I can adjust for it. It gives me a longer sight radius. I think it'll be more accurate. 
So I'm going to cut a dovetail into that uh, tang right there. And to start off, I got two slots to about the thickness of this blade, about 40 thousandths. And then I'm about 5.30 seconds back, and that's about a little over an eighth from here, a little over an eighth wide, just big enough to where I can get my file on edge in there. And I'm just going to make a series of slots to start with to take this chunk out. I'll go across here a few times and, and then I'll start filing, filing that down so I get a notch down in there between 40 and 50 thousandths. And 46, 46, and I've got my little three-cornered file, triangular file here. One edge is all the teeth of ground off of it. That's my save edge. And what I'm going to do is use that down on the bottom here, and I'm going to start going forward and then back. With this angle here, 60 degree angle, same as what the dovetail is. This dovetail is 60 degrees, the file is 60 degrees. So I'm going to be going down with it too. I'm going to go down uh, between, doesn't have to be that deep, between 50 and 60 thousand. So I'll use a, the hard edge to go down, and I can go back with that too. I'm filing an undercut on the edges of that notch until this just starts to go in. And since I can't file perfectly straight, it'll go in one side, it'll start to go in before the other side does. And I'll try all sides on this too, and then when I get one that starts to go in, I'll make a mark on the front of this so that it goes in each time. Or I can make a mark on this with a marking pen just on one side as long as I know this always goes to that side. Or you can make a mark here the same side as the touch hole is on. And then file it out until it starts going in. And what I want it to do is go in and get tight right when it gets in the middle. And that slot is right in the middle of my tang. I want it to be tight in that groove. And she's just starting to go in here. Goes in the best there. Try all the combinations. Starts there, but it's a little better here. And I try this too. And this goes in the further, shows the most promise. So what I've done, I've marked this side with a marker and I put a dot there so I know this goes in here. So now we're kind of to a point of where it's a very fine line between being just right and too loose. So you want to really ease off. Very light cuts now. Until she goes in. You go a little bit further each time. You don't want it too tight because you don't want to change the shape or the tang. So it doesn't have to be overly tight. And I'll file it down even with the tang here. And I'll round it all round off the corners nicely.